going to tell me a little bit about, tell me your name, who you are, what company you rep represent, just a little bit about you. Okay. I'm Charles Antis. I am the founder and CEO of Antis Roofing and Waterproofing. And we're a roofing company in Southern California. And we, our clients are the HOA space. So if it's built into a homeowner association, you see our trucks there. Okay. We service 1,200 homeowner associations in Southern California that average a few hundred units each. That's all we do. How many employees? We have about, 100, about 100 employees and 28 years and 20 days ago, wow. we wow. started the business. So what's exciting you? Tell me a little bit about where you are today even look, you know, you can start with a look back that got you here. Tell us a little bit about what's exciting you and why you're here at Sustainable Brands. <sighs> wow, well I'm here at Sustainable Brands because this is the most fabulous place I could be to be around people that think like me. It's a safe spot here. I'm a little bit mad. <laughs> I'm a little bit outside of the box, <laughs> like everybody else here. Everyone. <laughs> but I believe that there is a fabric kind of woven in the universe that precedes change. Yeah. And these are the people that are weaving that fabric. And once you get a hand in that fabric, you can't let go no. and you get another <laughs> hand and a foot. And, yeah. and so it's the funnest thing I've ever done. Good. Even though a lot of the ideas and a lot of the stuff that comes out don't work, we fail, we fail fast. We, you know, one out of 10 works and then we thrive and we connect to our people, we connect to our, all of our stakeholders and we connect to the community and we make a difference. And our purpose. So we you, find our purpose, yeah. You and I, I, I loved um, when we connected on the word purpose in our email exchange. Because yeah. when I find that, you know, I say I'm a self-proclaimed purposepreneur at Savvy Group. And I have it on my LinkedIn. I mean, I just, I, I don't know where it came from. I probably borrowed it from someone because <laughs> it sounded good. I just wanted to know how are you weaving purpose that comes from it, your, your authentic self into your brand, because I think a lot of people and CEOs and founders, such as yourself, feel like, well, we don't want to brag about it, we don't want to, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of people still not seeing that the great work that they're doing, the amplification of it, isn't right. a brag. Can you talk a little bit about? Yeah. Well, I grew up I grew up having that concept, you know, don't let the right hand know what the left hand's doing, <laughs> or God can't reward you. you know? <laughs> yeah. And so to me, that was ominous. I was a black and white thinker back then because yeah. that's how I was trained to be. But my myself was not, I was not black and white. My, my brain screamed to, to think outside of the box. Okay. I think finally, I didn't learn it was okay until I'd had the business quite a while. And then I started, the first time we donated a lot of roofs, we couldn't let somebody have a leaky roof just because they didn't have the money, money. to pay. <laughs> yeah. And over the years, we didn't know that was a tagline for business, ah. but eventually it became clear and yeah. it became pure. Uh, the mission of Antis Roofing is to help, is to assist healthy families into safe, dry homes. Mm. And so if that's your mission, and it's not just about profit, then yeah. the people precede the profit, and that's what ends up showing up. And so, to me, I, I, I'm a roofer. I mean, <laughs> I was a New York comedian. I was at a show for Scleroderma, and we were, we, we had all this big I know marketing stuff. <laughs> yeah. well, we're, at, we're at a show yeah. for, to benefit Scleroderma, and a New York comedian was up there, and he was like, with his accent, I won't use the word he said, okay. but he, he finally was making fun of people. He looked at me and goes, look at this guy. He's a flipping roofer, but he don't know it. My yeah. friend Joey in New York, he's a roofer. He's got mastic on his face. And I, I was embarrassed, Yeah. but after I slept on it, it resonated with me. And it's like, you're right. If a roofing company can do this, yeah. then anyone can. And yeah. we always put the people first. People comes before profit. Yeah. We have a we have a saying that we follow. It's written down, and it, and it, it is invoked whenever we're we're haggling on price. Yeah. And that is we err on the side of generosity with all of our stakeholders. And it doesn't seem like that that can be counterintuitive. How can you make a profit? But it's true. It's true. The more we give, the more we grow, and the more we grow, the more we can give. Yeah. And our growth is is legendary for our company right mm -hmm. now because we give in a big way. We, we have a hard time saying no. <laughs> so it's, it's been a, a great experience. And I feel like I can be authentically who I am at work and at home. Yeah. And that Just is in a, society. That I never was before. I know before. you, you I sit on boards, okay. you, do, you do a lot of community work. I get to do that because I have great people. I have yeah. a great company. 
everybody feels purpose in their job. Yeah. Purpose is that thing that brings us together because I have, the, the company has their purpose. Yeah. My COO has her purpose, which is very profoundly stated. She says, my purpose is to lift everybody I touch every day. Uh, and she does. Yeah. And because of her, I know my purpose. Yeah. She took me to the imperative purpose lab in Aaron Seattle. Hurst. Aaron Hurst. in the house, <laughs> represented the house. today. And That's I a learned plug my you, superpower. <laughs> and my superpower is to ignite passion in others for social good. And I get to do that on a daily basis. Yeah. And that's why I'm here. And uh, I, I don't wake up at three in the morning wondering how my business is going to survive anymore yeah. because we're thriving yeah. and we're giving more than we ever have. And, and the gifts come from everybody in our company. Yeah. It's a unified team give and purpose. So in a CEO landscape, and I know you're in some CEO groups, and you, you know, have your um, community of others, there's, again, there's this undertow that if you have these purpose initiatives or sustainability initiatives, it's going to take this funding, it's going to take this expertise, and it's, it's going to take a drag down on to what our core mission is. And quite frankly, we're kind of busy. Our business is in a growth stage. We're, you know, merged with whatever the story is that the CEO right. or the C-suite has to process every single day. How do you stop and take that pause? I mean, is it a walk with the trees? And you know, what what is it where I you? I do walk with the trees. Yep, yeah, yep. That's part I, of my ritual. <laughs> Good. But how do you? How could you advise others watching today that are in a similar mid-market, fast-growing, you know, heading to that billion dollars? That it's not about the billion dollars. It's about the journey getting there. And woven into the DNA of the company, there's something that they stand for greater than profits. Can you give any advice on where someone would start, at, at, like you, a founder, CEO of a, of a brand? I think so. I, I think I can try. I can tell you that I give advice every day. Um, a, lot of, a lot of business owners call me because I put myself in that position to help all business, not just roofing businesses, to, to embed a, a truly authentic CSR component. But I, I don't think I'm good at it, but I'll try. I, can, okay. I don't think, I'm, I'm not a great missionary. I haven't converted that many because the confusion is so vast. Yeah, and it's but noise out there. But I would say there. that it feels like there's not enough. That's, it feels like there's not enough. How can I afford to take care of my employees because they feel like a threat sometimes. In business today, you have to look at how employees can turn on you and there can be litigation and yes. so there's that fear that people have and and how can I cover all of these risks every business has all these risks and on top of that you have the shift in business right now is more profound than it's ever been ever. Yeah. it's the fastest shifting and you see it in brick-and-mortar stores you see it in service businesses liabilities going up profits going or margin go, uh, oh, not yeah. as high as it used to be and now we can't retain our employees because Millennials are influencing up and people stay a year and a half instead of five years yeah you're like okay great now we got to retrain rehire you know so that's package why up. That, that's the fear how is there enough at that point but yeah. this is the magic and I don't know how to say it where it's going to be heard yeah. but I can promise anybody that if they can find the cause that's pure authentic that's near and dear to their yeah. heart yeah. and embed it into their culture and into their marketing messaging internal and external messaging and make it authentic it doesn't have to be a lot of money but it has to be real it has to be some time and if you can talk about that cause that thing that fulfills you every week if you can talk about it every week inside and outside your company just a little bit you'll start to learn and the other thing that I would say is you have to experiment social media allows you to be imperfect in fact if yeah. you're too perfect on social media you look like kind Fa of a, kind of off mm, yeah it doesn't look authentic like, it's kind of fake yeah right so when you show up on social media to do your good works yes. nobody can touch you just do your good works no criticism will land on you and stick if any criticism hits you it will slide off so fast because the moment somebody criticizes you for doing the best thing you can do, everyone else digs in their heels, they become missionaries. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm grateful when I hear a vendor criticizing one of our competitors, yeah. I know that that's part of the secret sauce. Yeah. But I only know through years of bashing my head against the wall to figure this out. Yeah. But yeah. I, would, I would tell my, my fellow businessmen, be brave. This is a counterintuitive play. Yeah. But the more you give, the more you'll grow. And I don't know how this works, but sometimes nonprofits say thank you publicly, and that makes sense why that works. Yes. Sometimes we donate a roof to a nonprofit, and they don't say thank you. But still, 
It's a long-term play, but it plays back. I can tell you CSR is not a short-term play. No. If you're going to look right. for the ROI in the next three months, you're not going to see it. No. But you will feel a difference within six months. And then not only will you make more money, which we all want to do, yeah. and you can have more of an impact, yeah. but you will retain talent, you yeah. will attract talent, yeah. you will sleep better at night, and your company will have a peace in it that it didn't exist before because that purpose promotes a peacefulness that resides inside all my employees. Sometimes I, I wonder, how could they all have it? But yet I hear them in, in interviews where they're being interviewed and, all, and what they're saying is they get excited about coming to that's work. That's awesome. That, congratulations. That's awesome. I'm yeah. so happy that you get to live the life you do. And I mean, that's 100 employees strong, okay? That's yeah. 100 people and then their family. And that's, you know, it's just a multiplier effect it is when you amazing. think about just the 100 yeah. people working for you, but they could have five, five members in their family. Well, we actually have, it even goes deeper, and, yeah. and, this is, and this is how deep we go. We have, most of our employees are Latin American workers. They came from Mexico, mm -hmm. most of them are immigrants, yeah. and they, um, they have families here, but they also have families in Mexico. Right. And one of the things, you talk about purpose, it's nothing to do with me. Every Latin American worker I know, everyone sends money home to their family in Mexico and El Salvador yeah, every month. Every month. And yet they seem to, and that seems to create a balance in them. So I, this is not something, I can't take credit for what I've learned. I've learned it from my people. Yeah. When I try to figure out culture, because we now have a Mexican annual uh, Christmas bonus tradition of aguinaldo like they do in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> this year, we think our employees are gonna get an extra month's salary as a profit share wow. right before Christmas. Wow. And I'm so excited about that. We do Lobo Awards where, <laughs> because Mexican men uh, identify with the famed near extinct gray wolf of Mexico, the Lobo. The so we do Lobo Awards yep. and we really in de go deep into this. And I've learned so much from them. Yeah. They honor their they honor their father, they honor their parents. The parents honor their children. And I think that I've learned a lot from the men that, that work for me and the women that work for me. So it's it's really culture with inside a culture. So you were, you were awakened to see that there was something more than just what you were thinking was culture. They showed you their culture and then you said, oh, okay, let's, let's, let's bring those together. And you know, that has an amplification effect. It, well, let me tell you, I, I, I'm so excited because I went to the uh, annual, uh, the International Roofing Expo in Las Vegas two months ago, and my director of production, who's a Mexican man, Narciso Alarcon, yeah. two of my men were named um, MVPs of, in the roofing industry. Out of 250,000 workers, wow. two of them were in the top eight, and wow. one of them, Narciso, was named best of the best. Wow. And they just did a feature or cover article him on the, on Roofing Professional magazine, which is a very well-respected trade magazine. And it says around his face on the cover, leading with kindness. Oh. This is what <laughs> these people have brought to my company. And we, we now attract that talent. We oh, yeah. attract people. My COO that I've had for nine months, Karen Inman, is phenomenal because she lifts everyone around her. Yes. You know, that's her superpower. Yes. Anybody she touches, she lifts and she knows it and she's yeah. known it for a long time. Mm -hmm. But she's only here because of people like Narciso. Yeah. And Narciso yeah. stays because of people like Karen. And once you get a team yeah. of winners who who think outside the box, yeah. who are not satisfied with the status quo, who want to not only bring best practices to our own organization, mm -hmm. but my people want to bring best practices to the entire industry. Yeah. We want to bring best practices to all small business because that's the challenge. Small yeah. business, 10 to 100 million or so, it's really hard for that, where most of us work, it's really hard for that group to think there's enough that they can give something that's, away. It's true. But see, you're you're changing that, and I'm so glad that you're here today talking about not only the financial implications, but still that it's okay for the C-suite to lead, learn, and lead through what you're learning, adopt through what you're learning, and not just stand behind that you don't think you can, but what can you do? I mean, a lot of companies, the big brands, a lot of them can't get beyond incrementalism, but yeah. we're just saying in the you know sweet spot of mid-market, large enterprise, even small business, a little bit could go a long way. Well, there's two thoughts on that. Number one, 
the way to do this, but we don't have it figured out at all. I have no idea what I'm doing. I used to, when I would come speak at, at, at I think you have a little panels, bit of idea of what you're doing. It doesn't feel like it, okay. because we experiment all the time. Okay. We're trying stuff. We'll do silly stuff like a Pokemon give. We'll have somebody dressed in a Pokemon, <laughs> and he's handing away giving cards where people can give it to the nonprofit of their choice. That's great. But, but it's creative, and mm -hmm. some of it works, some it's of it fun. doesn't. Just Sometimes you don't know what worked, what didn't. But the thing about CSR is, I always thought the big companies had it figured out, because they do, they do, they talk about it. When I'm doing a panel, they're using words I haven't heard of before. <laughs> yeah. But finally, I was doing a panel with um, the CSR director of Chevron, and I said that, and he came to me after the panel and says, you can't say that anymore. And I, I asked why, and he said, because it's not true. We, we understand the science, yeah. but we don't have your passion. We, uh, we can't, we're too big. And you can't manufacture that. We affect 15% of the employees <laughs> or whatever, right. But we, if small business, I finally realized, oh my, my gosh, we have the advantage because we can infect 100 employees. Really, we have a small vessel. We can turn quick. We can fail fast. We do. We launch a program for CSR that's funny and cute on our on our social media. It doesn't work. It doesn't matter. We still gain from it. We try another one. That's right. And so we have an advantage. And I think that if you could fast forward 10 years from now, yeah. I think that you're going to see small businesses leading the way in CSR because they can completely address the entire ship and get everybody. And I think big businesses will compartmentalize and emulate small business practices as when they're teams. Yeah. And I think that's gonna be the next the next turn. That's what it feels like yeah. because that's where the questions are coming. How are you doing this? I don't know. We're experimenting, but it but it's working because you can see it in our employees. You can see it when I go to sell to a board meeting. Yeah. I sell HOA board meetings. Yeah. I go to a board meeting, I used to walk in and there was always a couple board member members looking at me like this. What's he thinking, selling us? He's a contractor, he's a con. <laughs> Something shifted a couple of years ago. When I walk into a board meeting now, there'll be five board members, male or female, and they're looking at me like this. <laughs> You know, like they're flirting with me. Yeah, like and they, 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 and I, they get me, and they get that we are trying to do everything we can, yeah. the best that we can do. We don't want to be the best roofing company in the world. We want to be the best company in the world. We want to have the, yes. the happiest employees, yeah. the best IT, yeah. the best community outreach, the best of everything. And with that kind of an attitude, it is a, is a, is a monumental shift. I love the point that you said that the smaller businesses could do some things really great and then others can learn from it. Imagine the power of a brand that is larger seeing something that you're doing and coming together to make that happen. It doesn't just have to be that is an happening. NGO. It is, and, and more of it, and I'm glad you highlighted that here because people that are smaller that don't think they can, maybe they could if they had a little, you know, some other stakeholders that wanted to come alongside that, that had the shared value. So I love shared value. I'm sure you learned a yes, bit about shared yeah. values and um, not only within your organization, but with vendors and suppliers and other things. So um, are we getting this right or what are we missing? I mean, you're so positive and you're so energized I, around well, this. So and I went to uh, the Thailand sustainability program um, breakfast yesterday. They hosted breakfast. And yeah, that was I, spectacular. I, were you there? I missed it, but I've heard so many amazing things about that. Well, it was amazing, that. but let me tell you, it was, this is everything that we're talking about here on how we can do more. None of us are seeing within the, the realm of society. We're not inside the box. Everybody here is outside the box. So that's, you have to get used to being a little, with a little discomfort. Yeah. Nothing's set. Yeah. And if you can learn to navigate in this world yeah. where nothing's set, we're, remember, we're outside, yeah. we're up there, we're building a fabric that, of thought that precedes social change. And if you can get comfort, just a little bit comfortable in that conversation, then that's when things lift. I'll give you an example that's pretty awesome okay. that my team did. Okay. The CEO of the NRCA came to me because we have a strong brand and we're profitable. A year ago, and he asked, what can the roofing company to do to lift the brand, to lift the margin? And um, that was a very big challenge to me. I, I went home and I slept on it. I had no idea. But I kept the thought in my head, and this is how the magic happens. And I'm just doing my thing. I spoke at a panel. The director of a local Ronald McDonald House was there. The, the, uh, the business development person, Susan Kenny, came over and she sat with us in order to set up a give that we were going to give to the local Ronald McDonald House. But she said, you know, I just got back from National and Rob Parker was there from, from Ronald McDonald House. And I said, really? That's interesting. You know the, the, the head of business development? Well, what if, what if we started brainstorming? What if the NRCA partnered with uh, Ronald McDonald House? And, 
And, and that's where it started. That's and then it. a month later, I wrote a prospectus. I'm on the phone with the leaders of the NRCA, <laughs> and I'm talking, I'm so excited, I'm like this, I'm hyperventilating, and there was like dead quiet. I thought, well, I scared them off, because I, I scare people off all the time. And then, but just three weeks ago, I was in San Diego with the, the, the movers and doers in the roofing industry, those that really yeah. provide this top yes. group of people that, that, that also support the Roofing Foundation, which is the Roofing Alliance for Progress. And we're inside this meeting. I see the, uh, the Ronald McDonald House person, the CEO up there, they're asking the men to vote for Ronald McDonald House to be the first ever nonprofit partner of the 130 year old NRCA wow. trade organization. Wow. And it was unanimous. In fact, when they show the video, I'm trying not to cry. I look around and I see these awesome, <laughs> tough roofers, <laughs> these roofing professional men that are just, they're just honorable yeah. men. And we're all trying not to cry, yeah. but that's the difference. There is no limit. There is no yeah. limit to what we can do. And I think I love those people because they don't yeah. see a limit and that's why this happened. Yeah. And they, I feel at home with them because now I'm getting to that spot where everything that I do needs to have a purpose in it or why do I do it? So I don't yeah. exist to make money. Money makes me feel secure. It's a byproduct that's going to happen. Right, but <laughs> I exist to help families function and thrive in safe, dry houses. And, that, and when I know that, and then I know beyond that my social purpose, um, my life is truly remarkable. So I know why you sleep at night, because <laughs> you're going to create, you're going to innovate, you're you're settled, and but yet you're not limited, and you're still you're still creating, and you're still trying to move forward and move this to the next, to the next, to the next. That's the weird thing. Okay, that's that's the weird part that I'm, I'm not caught up with is this is not even fair. My life is so good. My business life, my home life, it's so good. And the only reason it's so much better than it's ever been is I don't put a cap on anything anymore. Thank and so you. the yeah. path, mm -hmm. the, the momentum of, of the success of our business has never been half what it is today. Yeah. The trajectory of our business, there is no limit. I mean, I could see us having an international roofing company someday, and that sounds horrible, <laughs> but I wouldn't have to manage that no. part. That would be on operations. Yeah, you've got so, people. <laughs> so I've got my job, yeah. and I know what it is, yeah. and I do it with all my heart, yeah. and they do that with all their heart, well, and the trajectory is amazing. With love and purpose, too. Yeah, so there is definitely if we can get, there. to me, I'm going to sum this up a little bit. And then if there's anything else you want to share that, um, please do. It's all going to be edited anyways. But one of, there's one thing I want to say before yeah, I forget to say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, say. And I, it's not quite baked out yet, but I'm thinking about what is corporate social responsibility? And, you know, we're here talking about the good life. And, yeah. you know, what is that good life? What are we here for? What is it all about? And I believe for me, I've got a deeper meaning that maybe this was kind of born out of the last three weeks after going, actually it was after talking with Jay Golden from who wrote Retellable. Yeah. He actually repeated it back to me. He does that and when things come out of your mouth. And, and I think that to really look at purpose, it's like this. I believe in participating in creating the world that I want to live in. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that with its complete meaning, if, if you channel that into every part of your life, that's how I see the world. There's, if, if we can do better in anything, then why not set the bar a little higher? Don't beat anybody to get there, but no. let's have fun and nurture each other to get there. Yeah. And I think that's where I'm at right now with, with corporate social responsibility. Well, and I love that you framed it out that way. And I, I hope people are, you've truly inspired me. Um, I, Got a little. This recent. whole conference is inspiring. I know, you, right? It's our I tribe. Go, it's, it's like, like <laughs> yeah, it's a tribe. Like we bleed the same color. Yeah. So um, I hope people are inspired, as I am, to take fear, ego, and inertia, and just put it to the side. Allow your true, authentic self to come out, where purpose drives everything that you do, and I think the magic will continue to happen. Amen, sister. All right. <laughs>